Toasters. Should men, should husbands obey their wives? Yes. However, let's get into it. Get your glasses up. Get your glasses up. Toast to the men. Now, let's take the word obey. Obey means to comply to the instruction, principles, or directions of someone. Um, I know women particularly have a problem with that word because most times uh, is is used in the frame of a woman or a wife obeying her husband. And so they, they hate that word. And so I used to think it was a lack of understanding why they hate that word. But I don't think so. I think it's ego because a woman, <clears throat> sorry, a woman has no problem saying she obeys the law. She, have, she has no problem telling her kids to obey the law. So she definitely knows what the word obey means. Um, yeah. So maybe it's just something with obeying the man. I don't know. Ladies, let me know. But obey simply means to comply. So a man can definitely obey, comply with the instructions, direction, or principles of his wife. Definitely. Now, uh, I'm not talking about anything petty. No, let's, let's be grown up. I'm not talking about your wife telling you, um, um, you know, watch out for that pothole. Or there's a deer, babe, swerve. Or... Uh, watch out, a car is about to hit you. And you, you know, you've been stubborn and got this ego, ego uh, driven mentality. And, you know, you're not listening, you're not obeying, you're not complying. You know, obey is not a cuss word, guys. It's not, it simply means to comply. Uh, I'm talking about life altering things. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a situation like, uh, a decision to move from Texas to New York or to adopt a child um, or to buy, purchase a home. You know, life altering, life changing things. This is what I'm talking about. Should a man obey his wife? And he definitely should. However, there's a caveat. He has to be instructed by God by the all, by his higher self to obey, to comply. If not, no matter how logical her instruction is, her request is, or non-logical, illogical, or how emotional or non-emotional her request is, if he's not led or instructed by his higher self to comply, to obey, things are out of order. Now, this is just my belief. I believe the all or your higher self or God first, then comes you, wife, children. And between that, you know, there's some common sense, but we got to be led by God. So, uh, yeah, a man can definitely obey, comply with his wife's request or uh, principle. He, he definitely can but like I say, it, got, it has to be led by the Spirit of God. It has to be instructed to him in his spirit, his higher self. Yeah, listen, obey. Do do what she's saying. And I'm not even saying that she's motivated or driven by the right thing. She could be. Case in point. I'll take the story in the Bible. Long story short, story of Abraham and Sarah. Uh Sarah could not get pregnant for several years of trying. She could not get pregnant. Finally, Sarah says to Abraham, lay with my maidservant, Hagar, my slave, lay with her so you can have a child. This is when women took honor and pride in giving a man a child. She wanted to give him a child that meant a lot. I think we're, for the most part, past those times to our detriment. But these were the times. And 
it was looked down upon a woman uh, who could not bear children. She felt a certain way, society looked at her in a certain way, and so she wanted to give this man a child. So she wanted to take a shortcut uh, and have Hagar, her maid servant, give him a child. Now, this might sound weird today, but we gotta go back to those times, man, uh, near Eastern times. And so, even though Hagar, the slave, the maid servant, would have had this child by Abraham, it would have been Sarah's child because Sarah owns Hagar. Hagar is a slave. So it would have been Sarah's child, right? And so uh, 10 years pass. 10 years pass. Sarah's getting frustrated. Still no child. She sends Hagar in to Abraham and they do their thing. A child is created, a child is born, Ishmael is born. Now, there had to be some contempt, some meddling, some picking, I would think, when it's discovered that, okay, Abraham ain't the problem. You know what I'm saying? His bullets work. You're the problem, Sarah. So Hagar had to feel good, man, and kind of kind of rub that in her face, man. Probably not say nothing, because she's still a slave. But you know, you know women, how y'all can have that that aura, that energy about you without saying a word. But it's just a certain walk, certain prance, certain energy, let the person know. Yeah. Yeah, I I got one up on you. I'm sure that was happening. <laughs> I'm sure that was happening. And so there was some bitterness, man, some envy, some jealousy, I'm sure. Now, fast forwarding. Now, let's go back. You don't hear God in that in anywhere, right? And Abraham listened to Sarah, right? You don't hear, you don't hear God in that anyway, in anywhere in that conversation. You don't hear God. God's not speaking. They're not, they're not consulting with God. And of those times, during those times, that was a logical thing to do. So Sarah wasn't necessarily wrong. That was a logical thing to do in those times for a maid servant, a slave, to have children by the husband if the wife couldn't. This was a logical thing. But they did not consult with God. Abraham didn't consult with God. He just listened to Sarah. Now, fast forward. Guess what? God appears. And says, tells Abraham that Sarah's going to have his child. You name him Isaac. Sarah overhears this and laughs. But lo and behold, she does get pregnant. She does have a child. They do name him Isaac. So now we got a problem. Because the firstborn is by a slave, by a maid servant. But now you got another child by the wife. Things are kind of out of order when you say out of order because Abraham never consulted with God. He just obeyed Sarah. And now you got a maid servant who has the older child and the wife who has the younger child. Things are out of order. Fast forward, uh, two years go in and uh, Sarah is weaning Isaac off of her breast. And there's a celebration. Ishmael, the firstborn is there. The son of the slave is there. They say he's mocking Isaac. For whatever reason, mocking, teasing, you know, I'm, I'm sure, you know, the celebration uh, mentioned that Isaac is the heir, but Ishmael is the firstborn, you know. So, you know, I don't know really what he was mocking him about. I can only, you know, speculate like us all. We can only speculate, but it says mocking. Now, no mother wants her son mocked. No mother wants her son mocked. And just looking at the time frame, Isaac was two years old, being weaned, and Ishmael had to be about 16. So a mother really is going to have an issue with that. A 16-year-old mocking a two-year-old, her two-year-old son. It's going to be an issue. So Sarah tells Abraham, get rid of this maid servant and her son. Now, man, this caused Abraham distress. It's causing distress. But God came to Abraham and said, don't distress over this. Don't worry over this. Listen 
to anything Sarah says, obey Sarah. Whatever she says, comply. Obey her. Now, Sarah <laughs> wasn't, wasn't actually, you know, uh, doing the righteous thing by saying get rid of Hagar and Ishmael. She wasn't trying to be righteous. That was emotion. But God said, hey, go ahead and listen to her. Whatever she says, obey. I'm going to work this out. You know, and I, I'll just cut the story off there. And, and it was worked out. I mean, you know, I could go deeper, but it was worked out. But it only was worked out when Abraham listened to God. Yes, he obeyed Sarah. He did. But it came from God. See, man, it's weird, though. It's weird being a man or a husband because this is the thing, man. You got to be strong enough to stand 10 toes down. Like, you can't be a sucker at all. If you're going to be a good husband, man, you can't be, in, you can't be a sucker, bro. But then on the flip side, you have to be sensitive enough to hear your woman's voice and know when God is speaking through her. Right? What she said may be logical. Like I said before, it may be logical. It may not. None of that even matters. You got to know your spirit has to be sensitive to detect. It is coming from God. What she said makes sense. What she's saying doesn't make sense. None of that even matters, man. Things got to be in proper order. That's the whole thing, man, with the universe, with the world, is order. It's mathematics. It's order, man. And so there's an order to life. There's an order between the relationship, between the all, your higher self, or God, you, a wife, children. There's an order. And... Regardless if you think something is logical or makes sense or emotional or not emotional, none of that even matters, really. You got to know, it's my higher self. It's God speaking. And everything's going to work out. So, yeah, brothers, you got you, you Yes, you can obey your wife. You can comply. Obey is not a cuss word. You can comply with her instruction. Right? You can with her suggestion. You can comply. You can obey. But brothers, you better make sure God is telling you to comply. Or you're going to be frustrated. You're going to be pointing fingers. I'm telling you, man. If God ain't in that conversation, if God ain't speaking, don't do it. Don't do it, brothers. Uh, you're going to have some, some heartache and headache. Trust me. All right. Let me know what you guys think, man. From me to you, as always, love, peace.